Good evening and welcome to Roots Revival. My name is Meg and I am the Associate Minister of Evangelism, Engagement and Missions here at Centenary and I'm joined by this wonderful band behind me, Martha, Pat and Lee and they've got some great things in store for us. If you would like to follow along to our worship service, in the video description you will find a link to our bulletin. Also, if you have any prayer requests you'd like for us to be praying for you and with you this week, then you will see Martha Albertson's email and you can just send her an email of your prayer requests. Also, there's a link to our Give page, so if you would like to financially help the ministries here at Centenary, you may do so there. And I'm going to turn it over to our rock and band. <coughs> Please join me in prayer. Creator God, we thank you so much for a new year. And we just pray that 2021 will be a whole lot better than 2020 was. God, we ask that you will continue to be with those in our midst who are struggling during this season, missing loved ones they can't see, or those who have passed away in the last year. God, we also ask that you will continue to be with Jim Mabry as he continues to heal. And we just pray that you will give him the strength and know that there are those who, of us who are praying for him and thinking about him. God, we just continue to ask that you be with all of those who are still working on the front lines, whether that's in the hospitals or the schools or even uh, those who um, deliver our packages and cook meals for us. God, we thank you so much for all that we have been given, and we just um, ask that you will continue to be with those in this community that we may know your love during this time. In your name we pray. Amen. Those magic men, the magi, some people call them wise. Or oriental, even kings, well, anyway, those guys, they visited with Jesus, they sure enjoyed their stay, until warned in a dream of King Herod's scheme, they went home by another way, yes, they went home by another way, home by another way, maybe me and you can be wise guys too and go home by another way. Another way, safe home, as they used to say. Well, keep 
Epiphany. Today begins the season of Epiphany. Epiphany means manifestation and unveiling of sorts. It is when something that is hidden has been revealed, which seems like an interesting thing to discuss when the fact that Jesus and a bit about who he was and was going to be has already been revealed to Mary and Joseph. His new life wasn't hidden, certainly not to his parents who at this time have probably had a few sleepless nights taking care of him, feeding him, adjusting to life with a newborn baby. But today is when God makes divine glory known in all the world through Jesus. We see this in today's text through Jesus' birth being revealed to the Magi, who it's helpful to note are Gentiles. In some cultures, people wait until Epiphany to open their Christmas gifts because Epiphany celebrates when the wise men brought gifts to Jesus. But I think I can speak for children, and probably most adults everywhere, when I say I'm glad we don't wait until now to open ours. Our scripture this evening comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Hear now the word of the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. 
Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Please pray with me. Creator God, guide us so that we might have the knowledge to know when we need to go home by another way. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Real quick, I want to make sure that all of you know that even though we sang We Three Kings at the beginning of tonight's service, We are never actually told how many magi there are, just that there are three gifts. And there is also no reason to believe that they were even kings. We know that they are foreigners, those who came from the east to follow the star, but the original Greek is the word magos, which is the name given by the Babylonians, Medes, Persians, and others to wise men, teachers, priests, physicians, astrologers, seers, interpreters of dreams, augurs, soothsayers, sorcerers. You get the point. I'm not sure if that word was ever used to refer to kings, but regardless, that is a wonderful him especially to be sung on Epiphany and reminds us all of what happened that night. So now even though we aren't sure if they were kings or how many of them there were, this was not your typical group of visitors to see a newborn. They are Zoroastrian or Persian priests. They are those who study the stars, one star in particular. We are told that they had seen Jesus' star in the east, and that was all it took for them to come and honor him. Some say that during that time there could have been a comet or a supernova or the result of planetary conjunctions or maybe even something like that Christmas star a few weeks ago people were looking to the sky to see. But regardless of what it was that got their attention, The fact of the matter is that there was something within them that told them to follow it, to see where and to whom it would lead. I always think that it's interesting that God chose to reveal the birth of Jesus to the world, to the foreigners, to those who wouldn't normally have been aware with the use of a star. It reminds me of those times when we need a very big, obnoxious, obvious sign to convince us of something we may have heard countless times, but just not paid any attention to it. I think about all the times I have asked my mom for advice, listening to what she has to say, perhaps half-hearted, I know, sorry mom, only to ignore it until I hear a friend say it or come to the conclusion myself after more days than necessary. And each time I finally get it, I finally see what it was my mom was saying, I'm usually met with her response of, didn't I say that weeks ago? Or what did I tell you? This passage reminds me of those times in my life, not because I have followed a star or anything like that, but because I think I might, more times than not, be behaving more like the chief priests and legal experts in this text. You don't hear much about them in this passage. They are just there, it seems. Yet as soon as Herod heard from the Magi that there was a newborn king, he immediately called for the chief priests and legal experts. Verses 4 and 5 say, Herod gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. And then they quote scripture found in 2 Samuel and Micah. 
Herod hears this secretly calls for the Magi and sends them to go and find the child and report back to him all that they see so that he can also go and honor the baby. And before we will look more at that, I always think that it's a bit odd that the chief priests and legal experts seem to be aware of Jesus' birth. They knew it was coming. They were about to quote the scriptures telling of his coming. But if they knew all of this, Why don't they go and see for themselves or even accompany the Magi for the last part of their journey? It seems like as soon as they heard what the Magi had to say, there was almost this light bulb moment for them like, oh, that's what we've been told all along. That must be what's happening. Huh. At the very beginning of this gospel, we see them admitting that Jesus, this baby, is the one that they have read about. Yet there is no indication that they ever go to visit him or pay attention to the signs that the Magi have seen. And later on in Matthew, in chapter 16, Jesus tells the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed on the third day to be raised to life. In Matthew chapter 26, we are told, The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death. So even though at the very beginning of his life, these chief priests seemed to understand who he was, that knowledge doesn't prevent them from stopping what happened later on in Jesus' life. Which leads us to wonder why. We can tell right away that Herod is fearful of what this new king will mean. He fears for his life and the empire he has built, I'm sure. And the chief priests seem to be afraid as well. What will this new king's life mean if magi are also aware that he was born? If they were foreigners, there's a good chance they were looked down on by the chief priests, perhaps judged for what they did and their lifestyles. After all, they were wise magicians from a foreign land who traveled here because of a star they saw in the sky. Not only that, I'm sure the chief priests, like Herod, are concerned about what this new king coming will mean. They are clearly on Herod's side. He gathers them and asks questions of them. Their input matters to him. But with this new king, will they be given the same respect? Maybe not, considering who it is that has come to welcome Jesus. What I love about the coming of these magi is how it so perfectly begins a gospel that ends with Jesus telling his disciples, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. I read something once that said, the magi could not find the king they were looking for until they heard from those who knew the scriptures But those who knew the scriptures didn't recognize the sign that the Messiah had been born. I thought about that and wondered, how often are we given signs of God's presence in the world, yet are unable to recognize them because we are worried about pushing our own agendas or living our own lives and don't want that kind of disruption? Luckily, however, The Magi were able to find Jesus, and we are given an idea of what the first baby shower may have been like. We are told that they arrived, and when they entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, they fell to their knees and honored him. I love this because it reveals to us that the very first gift given to Jesus by the Magi was not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but worship. They fell to their knees to honor him before they did anything else. What a powerful thing to think about when we consider that these are not Jewish people who have read the scriptures and were anticipating his coming, but foreign Gentiles. Gentiles who would not know the customs of the time or have grown up with the Old Testament and prophets telling of a savior that was to come. Rather, this was a group of people that shows that God was and is here for all people. From his birth, we are told that Christ's coming and life was not going to be what those at that time had always expected. 
He was going to cross over boundaries, offering love and grace to those society may have excluded and doing so in ways that had never been done before. As we think about all that his coming and birth meant, I pray that we can remember the Magi, that even though they didn't know the customs or how things should go or perhaps what to wear or how to act, they knew what it looked like to worship and praise this king. It can't, it can be easy to get caught up in what others are doing or what they look like or what it is that they have to offer that we forget that God loves us just as we are. So it is my prayer that we can, can go from this place remembering that love that God has for us just as we are, regardless of our background or where it is we are coming from. Amen. Please sing with us. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare His room. And heaven and nature to sing. And heaven and nature to sing. pretty good benediction. Go with this joy and love. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shine.
upon us until the glory don't give us the light to 